Well, we're out here in the beautiful Everglades at Green Glades West with Guy Harvey, which I'm very honored, and his family. Good and, to be here. And friends, and we're, we're going to go out and look at God's landscaping and, and try to do the Grand Slam of the Everglades. That's deer, turkeys, hogs, bears, and an alligator, and a panther, maybe. What do you All think? in one day. All in one day. Oh, my goodness. What a challenge. We're honored to be out here today because uh, I think we can save the Everglades, and if we save the Everglades, all of the discharges out our rivers, the Caloosahatchee, the St. Lucie, the Indian River Lagoon, will be normal, and the sheet flow to Florida Bay will save Florida Bay and Biscayne Bay. And Ron, what people don't realize is the connectivity between the Everglades and the ocean, how closely related they are. Yes and uh, people just have no idea of, of the intricacy of how nature works. Yes. And if you mess with one part, it really has a bad effect on the other part. Conservation and preservation of the Everglades is a really important issue now here in South Florida. And it, it doesn't affect just the Everglades, it affects, it affects all the mangroves, all the beaches, all the lagoons, all the near reef environment. Even the offshore environment is affected by what we do here on land. And nine million people rely on the Everglades for drinking water, so it certainly will affect the quality of life to people in South Florida. What we must remember is that conservation is also good for business. So the value of, of wildlife is becoming increasingly important, not only in the socio-economic fabric of this state and, and the country, but uh, in the general well-being of mankind. And being the fishing capital of the world, to continue that into the future, it's important that we We'd save the ocean, uh, save our estuaries, save Florida Bay, save Biscayne Bay, and we can do it. Great, shall we go and see some wildlife? Let's go see some wildlife. Alrighty. Just like a few minutes into the tour already and these two deer just pop out to say hello and it's the closest I've ever been to wild deer. It's pretty impressive and it's a glorious day and I can't wait to see what else we're going to see on this trip. It's exciting. Hey! Hey! Hog! So Ron, very cool. Here we've got not only deer but there's really big hogs walking around. Yeah. I mean, how many hogs you got in this area too? You know, across our, our whole natural ranch here, we, we probably got about 300 head of wild hogs, which yeah. were turned loose 500 years ago by the Spanish when they landed on the west coast and interfaced with the Calusa Indians and uh, got in a big battle and the horses and the cows and the hogs got off the ship and entered into the beautiful Everglades and acclimated to the environment and multiplied by the thousands. I think the size of that one, man, that's cool. Wow. We have a lot of water, 100 inches of rain a year. The, the real benefit is getting it in the right place with the right timing and distribution. And then the surplus water uh, building reservoirs will benefit people as well. I think that working together your foundation and my foundation, saving the Everglades will save our, our rivers, all of our discharges of quantities of water into our estuaries in the Gulf and the Atlantic, and then be able to save Florida Bay and Biscayne Bay. Me too, Ron. I mean, this is an iconic habitat. The Everglades is quite a well-defined area. The ocean is a vast area, so the challenges are huge there. What is so nice is, is you've taken a, a, a doable project, something that is achievable over a certain amount of time, and you've got the ball rolling. And everybody downstream of the Everglades is going to benefit and uh, really thank you for head starting this project. The 
this one particular slough, we call it crawfish slough because certain years we go in there, there's just millions of crawfish in waves. And then you may go a year or two where you see very yeah. few. V very interesting, but uh, very good to the food chain out here. Of course, so this is dry season now, so are they kind of concentrated in small pockets? Yeah, I mean, well they kind they of bury up, up in oh, the they mud. Get into the mud, okay. Yeah. Cool, that makes sense. Yeah. Good, let's go and have a look. Yeah, let's go. A lot of wildlife. These oak trees got acorns and and uh, good for the deer, the bears. A strangler fig growing up this tree here? Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's amazing. Yeah. What kind of a palm is that? That's a sable. Very unusual bark on it. Yeah. Compared to these guys. Yeah. Yeah. We've been basically out in the open prairies because I want you to see wildlife. But as the day goes on, we're going to get in some areas that are so pristine the trees look haunted. Fantastic. This is the beginning of the headwaters of the Kissimmee Billy, which is one of the most famous cypress swamps in all of Florida. Uh, the headwaters continue about another two miles to the northwest, which we'll be crossing and you'll see the, the beauty of God's landscaping. At the beginning here, we have a tree that dates back 500 years ago. And I actually found it. I was in there looking for an alligator that I had seen on Gator Beach. And so I waited in there one day and, uh, and run into this virgin cypress. You can just imagine this tree was there when the Spaniards landed 500 years ago. And through all the lightning, all the hurricanes, uh, it's still here today. And I believe that when they timbered the big cypress, due to the depth of the peat and muck and the high water conditions, they couldn't get to this one group of trees. A lot of rattlesnakes, <laughs> a lot of moccasins. Seeing oh, cypress yeah, about half that size, that size yeah. and, yeah. and that's yeah. 150 year old cypress yeah. is about 18 inches. Four feet up from the bottom is about 18 inches. That's about 150 years right. old. What we're going to is 10 feet in diameter. Oh my God. But the tree next door is taller. That one there is taller. Yes, yeah. because the top of this yeah. one Bust would off. be 30 foot higher. Yeah. And every one of the uh, cypress heads from here to all the way to Florida Bay, to the tip of Florida. If you notice, we come from a pine island, mm -hmm. and then you come through Cyprus, mm -hmm. and then you get into the pop ash mm -hmm. that we're in now. Right. And as you continue to go into to the center, you'll get to the pond apples, okay. and then you'll have a flag pond. And so all the different plant communities are very sensitive to certain water levels, and the topographical elevation from the pine island to the center of this uh, headwaters is seven, six to seven feet difference mm -hmm. in topographical elevation. Mm -hmm. And that's why your landscape changes. Mm -hmm. Four months from now, we'd be in water nearly waist deep. July and August, when the alligators are breeding, we can try to call some to us. And, so where would they be now that it's so dry there's no water in here? Are they Actually mo most of the gators in this area is over there. over there, yeah. I call it Gator Beach. Okay. And it's much deeper, there's more water in it. Okay. And they'll move around to the lowest point in the swamp. Yeah, but they won't leave, they won't migrate to another pond, another swamp. No, they will. Oh, okay. Especially during mating season. Oh, okay. Oh, man. 
That's the first rattlesnake I've ever seen in the wild run. Really? Amazing. What a beautiful animal. Yeah. Tell, know, me, tell me more about them. Well, remember when I we left the buggy and I told you to be careful for rattlesnakes yeah. in yeah. here? And uh, there's a lot of rattlesnakes in this geographical area. But it's actually a beautiful, uh, beautiful snake. And really, he warned me. And, and my ears are trained even somebody else heard it as well. I guess all of you heard it. Oh, yep. yeah, you did. Correct. But they're part of the food chain and, and uh, I protect them out here myself. I don't allow anyone to mess with them. Everyone wants to kill a snake for some reason. And uh, I think they're very beautiful and if, if you're uh, no nature, uh, all you gotta do is listen a little bit and they're not gonna bother you. And this is a baby one. Uh, that's a small one. That's uh, that one's probably four feet, maybe a little longer, but I've actually seen them in here in this swamp that's uh, 10 feet long, 20 rattlers. Yep. Very beautiful and uh, they should be protected, you know. They're awesome. That was so cool, it reminded me of another lake and Ron just said, look over there and there's an eight foot gator sunning himself on the bank. We haven't seen one all day. Fantastic. Yeah. There he is, look at that. If you're gonna wrestle with a gator like that, how would you approach it, Ron? First of all, most of the time I do it at night and have a, a headlight and I'll have a little resistor where I can make it amber mm -hmm. and, and you actually blind them mm -hmm. and then I wade into the swamps and once I get in position get control of the mouth right away under okay. the bottom jaw and then you just hang on because you're going to be going into depth rolls. Sure. And, uh, so you go straight for the mouth, hold it shut. Yeah. And come what may. And hang on. Okay. And after about there a minute, the, yeah. after about a minute, uh, they get, they lose their energy. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, yeah. takes about a minute, but yeah. you'll, you'll, it'll look like a Tarzan movie for a while. <laughs> and really, it's a culture. Okay. You, you know, 125 years ago, in every little town wasn't a football team; it was an alligator wrestling. Got you. Yeah. We can't thank you enough, Alex and Jessica. Her first time here. I've had a fantastic day. Thank you so much for your hospitality and showing us such a wide variety of bird life, animal life and plant life, all in your magnificent Everglades. Thank you. Oh, you are yeah. so welcome and I'm honored that you're here. There's another advantage for me, of course, being a, a wildlife artist, I get inspired by what <laughs> I see around me. And while it's fun taking pictures of this and that, whether it's a gator or a a hog or a deer or whatever we, we saw today, we saw plenty. It's permanently imprinted in my onboard computer and I'm going to leave the Everglades today full of all kinds of new images and new options and really inspired by nature and by you of course. And I look forward to working with all of you. Yeah. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and long live the ocean and long live the Everglades. Absolutely. Long live the ocean and long live the Everglades indeed. I think it's up to all of us to uh, make sure that all these things live way beyond our short time on Earth and uh, it's our collective responsibility to conserve all natural environments. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep.